The next stop is on the radar radio. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. Yeah. Yes, sir, baby. On the radar radio. Yo, special guest in the building. Detroit in the building. Corny Bell in the building. My guy. Welcome to the show. Peace to the God. What's Good going on, my on today? Oh, yeah. Appreciate it. Appreciate Good it. I had to represent the right way. Right. Type right shit. Way. Tell me about the kicks, though. Uh, for the people who can't see. Okay. Yeah. So, I got the hood on there. You feel me? Everywhere I go, I try to make sure I take something that symbolize where I come from. Mm -hmm. And then on the side of it, I got long list. Snoop, my little brother just passed. You feel me? I got him rest on my back. Peace, rest in peace. So, you feel me? Got to take him everywhere I go. Dope, man. Dope. I like. I love the kit customs. Oh, yeah, for sure. Custom for sure. joints, man. How you been? I've been good. I've been good, actually. Been going through the ups and the downs of uh, of life while balancing artistry at the same time. Mm. How sure. you been? How you been balancing that? Um, I say stepping into my purpose more. I got tired of running from my calling with music and everything that come with being a leader. So just, I feel like I'm in a space right now where like it's shit or get off the pot. Mm. I've been sitting on the toilet too long. Right, me? right. I like so, that. Should I get off the pot? I've been sitting on the toilet I've been too long. Been sitting on the toilet too damn long, bro. It's time to make some shake. Cause like when I was when I'm looking at your music, right, there is a gap in dropping. No right. Doubt. There's no like doubt. a hold on. Let me let me find it. Cause I was just thinking about this too. There was like a what? So you haven't dropped the project in three years, right? For and then sure. like even with the singles, there's a gap between 2021 with one up, and then obviously introspection out now. Go stream that, please. Most um, definitely. that two year gap. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about it. Um. We had a one-off deal with RCA. Okay. And shout out to Mark Pitts, Gooch, the big homie. Mm. Um, he had signed us back in like 2000 and like 18 or 19, like at the at the plight of like my career where I got known in the city in Detroit based off my freestyles. Yeah. So um, we had just got to a space to where they had hired a, a new staff and um, me and my team, we had different visions. And I had a real nigga conversation with, with Pitts, and he was on real nigga time. He didn't want to hold me up. Like, he understood where we were at. And from that moment on, I went through a lot of spiritual growth. Mm -hmm. I, I went through a lot of soul searching with finding myself. I lost my grandma in the midst of that. Which side is she? I lost my grandma in the midst of that. So mm -hmm. I took a year just alone off of that, like away from music, just to properly grieve and mm -hmm. get my shit together. And then the past year and a half, well, really, too, we really just been sonically growing. Playing with my voice and creating a body of work that is timeless mm, at like the end that. of the day. When um when you were going through all this and obviously, you know, losing your loved ones, what was like the moment where you felt comfortable enough to step back into that purpose that you were talking about? Um I would honestly say the top of this year. Top of this year, okay. The top of this year, me and uh, Royce Defy Nine, shout out to the big homie. I had um me and the team had Proposed the idea with him executively producing a project. Oh, I love that, that. We were working on, yeah, and he was all for it. So I would say, like for me, I've always had two feet in hustling and being an entrepreneur and everything that came with that lifestyle and one foot in music. Mm -hmm. So I would attribute that also to a reason why, like, I haven't gotten to that space musically comfortably right. because I've never been two feet. Every time something came up musically for me, if it wasn't something that was good for me. I would abandon it and I go back to what I know. So, you know, I finally got to a space to where it's like God not allowing me to run from it no more. I got to step into my leadership, step into my power and be the voice for the generation. Like, because my style of music and the way that I rap, it's, it's, it's real hip hop. Yeah. You feel me? It's, it's, it's real rap. It's real consciousness. It's real street shit. All of that wrapped in one. You feel me? Like, I feel like I'm telling a narrative and a story of what's really going on in Detroit. And right. just every ghetto across the world, but really, you feel me? I'm I'm telling a narrative from my hood, Joy Road, and everything that I grew up witnessing. Mm. Where is Joy Road in uh, Detroit? On the west side. On the west side. On the west okay, side. Okay. You know, I, I was watching some of your other interviews. You mentioned Royce uh, a couple other times in interviews. What's like the history of you and Royce? Like, you know, what I'm saying to the point where you feel like comfortable enough to have that call and be like, "Yo, can a legend? Can you come executive produce my project?" Um, you know what? I had a relationship with his brother first. Shout out to Vicious. I had a relationship with his yeah, brother yeah. first while I was coming up and building my fan base. Mm -hmm. And his brother came to Royce and was like, yo, it's this kid that's doing this thing. Mm -hmm. He within our lane of hip hop and rap. Like, you should check him out. So Royce silently started to check me out. And then he started to shout me out via social media. And I just get random tags like, yo, Royce was on live. And he just shouted you out to Lupe Fiasco. He just shouted you out to oh, this person. Hard. So... Um, the relationship started just off of a little homie to big homie. Like, 
on some shit like that. And um, my team came up with the idea, like, yo, now that you're back in the space for music, it would be dope if Royce executively produced everything that you're doing from this, not necessarily from this point forward, but for your next project, it'd be harder for us. Like the new era, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I reached out to him, hit him. He like, it's a no-brainer, little homie, pull up. And we spent the last year and a half sonically building what's mm -hmm. getting ready to come out. Mm, so it's almost done. Yeah, no, 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 no. The first body of work done. Okay, it's done. Yeah, yeah. We and that's the one that Royce is executive. Producer. Yeah, no okay. doubt, no doubt. Fine. So like, you said you spent the past year and a half with it, right? Mm -hmm. So in what ways have the two y'all sonically crafted this project together? You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, I, obviously I'm obviously you know when people say executive producer, some people just. Slap the executive producer tag on. Obviously, I know this is different, right? Yeah, no, no, you're no. actually in the studio with him. Yeah. Right? How yeah. is he, how have you and he over this past year and a half sonically, uh, well, evolved you sonically and how have y'all crafted this project together? Well, the first thing that I learned from Nickel is his writing process. Mm -hmm. Like, he'll write a million verses to one song until he feels he got it right. Before, like, my writing process was, nigga, once I write a verse, like, I gave my all at that perspective in that time. Like I gave my all at that time. Like I'm not writing another verse, but he taught me the process of writing, the process of knowing when you're at that mark when it comes to writing a verse and pushing me to be a way better artist and changing how I view and approach music. So I learned that from him first. And um, I learned patience. Mm with him in this space. Because like I'll be impulsive with a lot of shit. Like, bro, I'm ready to drop. I'm ready da 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 Like, this shit taking too long. And he'll always have an answer like, okay, like, bro, it's good. Like, everything going to work, work itself out. Like, what are you tripping for? We got the music. We got what's needed. Um, so I learned patience from him. And in regards to, our, like, our creative process, I would just say at first, he was more so hands off. He wouldn't want to interfere with my creative process. He would just want me to create. But I had a real nigga conversation with him and was like, bro, you know, like, if you don't like something or you feel I could be doing something better, I'm not anal about my music. Like, I'm in a space to where I want to grow. I want to be a better artist. Yeah. So, like, you got that space to be a real big homie and tell me if something could be better if you got the ear for it. And over time, he started to do that. So we went from him being a little negligent with you feel me approaching me yeah. to him telling me how he felt like I, I like that record it's cool and I know when he really loves something so over time we built man to man and it just made the music 10 times better that's fine so like there was like a period where he wouldn't interrupt your creative process at yeah no nah, no nah. like he'd be talking in third person like he'd call probably my manager he'd talk to his manager and he'll say what he feel and I personally wouldn't fully know mm -hmm. and it just took for us to get to know each other because he right. didn't. He's an artist himself at the end of the day, so he never wanted to come off as like, "This is right" or "This is wrong." He always just wanted me to be as creative as possible, and it's like true to like you, like as possible. Yeah, Cause exactly. Because like, if, if he steps in, in in some of those moments, then obviously you're gonna be like, "Oh shit!" You're gonna start rethinking everything. Too. Bingo, and, and you know it on some real shit. I got to a space to where I was rethinking a lot with him. I was in my head more than I was in my heart space with creating. Mm -hmm. And um, it took a while for me to get out of that. Because like, you know, I put him I put him on a high pedestal when it comes to lyricism and being a lyricist. Like Royce is an alien when it comes to rapping. Like that nigga can really, really rap, bro. Right. So, you know, getting his approval on a lot of things meant something to me when we first started off working. Mm. That's and, beautiful though. Yeah, no so doubt. Listen, can we say the name of the project yet or no? Yeah, 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 yeah. The name of the first body of work is called Microdose. 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 T tough, man. Why Microdose. Microdose? Okay, so that's like a double layered thing. So like I'm into psychedelics, I'm into healing, I'm into higher learning, um, knowledge of self and all of those things. And for me, a microdose is just a sample of what's to come. Hmm. So that's where the title really came from because we got another body of work that's coming after this one that's like the That the, he also executive produced, or that's he, just you. He's on that project as well. Okay, okay. Yep, okay. yep, yep. Gotcha, His okay. presence is on that project as well. Got it. Like, that's the meat and bones. Like, that's the one that, like, I can't wait because being away from music for the past two, two and a half, three years, we wanted to still get music out. We wanted to be integral with the music at the same time and, and not just put microwave music out or just drop something just to drop it because mm -hmm. we've been away. So with this first body of work, we just wanted to warm the market up. Gotcha. And what's coming after this one is really the that shit. Right. You said you went to psychedelics, like it's like microdosing like the shrooms and Yeah, like microdosing that. shrooms. I done did shrooms, ayahuasca, L S D, I what's done did ayahuasca? some everything. So ayahuasca is basically you have feminine plants and you have masculine plants in the psychedelic community, okay. right? So the mushroom is more of a masculine plant. 
So ayahuasca is a feminine based plant that is used in indigenous with indigenous tribes that's used to tap into the spirit realm and tap into ancient realms of healing within yourself. And it's done by tea and ceremony. Mm -hmm. So I did that way before I did any other psychedelic and that shit like expanded my mind and like I went deeper into knowledge of self within myself and my belief of the creator and everything that I thought was true, all of that shit shattered. Mm. And I've been on a journey ever since then, like not only putting myself back together, but truly discovering myself and remembering who I am. Mm. You know, I, I was watching like an older interview that you had done and you said that like you felt like conscious rap was like coming back, right? No doubt. Do you still feel that or do you feel like it came back? Because that was an interview, I think it was like a four-year-old interview or something like that. But Yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. I feel like where we're at right now in, in hip hop, um, I feel like everything is like, it's a difference between fast food and a full course meal. Mm. So, you know, it's, it's, it's balancing the game. So I feel like we do need all facets of the game. We need the street music. We need the club music. We need the twerking music. We need conscious rap. But I feel like right now, people are missing substance. Like I miss putting a record on and it gave me that feeling or it took me to a place, or I related to the artist and it made me fall in love with the artist that much more. And I feel like the way we consume music now, everything is fast paced. Like you can hear an album now and you'll be ready to hear another project from the nigga the next week. When a few years back, a nigga can drop a project and you can live off of that project. You can pull gems, you can eat it as food for a year at least you feel me before you were ready to hear something new so i most definitely feel like music was substance not even just conscious music mm. you feel me because like i wouldn't want to be placed in a box as being just a conscious artist because i'm way more than that i rap right. about real life yeah. but i am a conscious person i am aware i practice mindfulness but i do feel like music with substance is coming back more than conscious music mm. yeah because conscious because the word conscious like i think there was a great conversation that was like uh I think like a little like a year, two years ago. I think Boz had it, um, and Boz was just like, it depends on what your definition of conscious rap is. No, no. Some people like people who Kodai Black is their favorite rapper. They can look at him as like conscious rap because no, he's no. speaking to them. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? It all depends on what your definition of conscious rap is. But I do like that, like uh, uh, rap or more. Um, what did you say? Music with substance. Substance, yeah. Music with substance. Something that I can take from. Something like that I can listen to, and it changed my perspective. Right. Or it put me deeper in thought, or it made me want to be a better person, or you feel me? It just changed my view on whatever the topic may be at a record. Yeah. Like that's something that I view to be like music with substance at the end of the day, or something that gives me a feeling that words can't describe. Mm, right, right. And I feel like you're coming back at like such a perfect time too, especially with like. So many eyes being on like Detroit, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Um, which I love for y'all, man. You know what yeah, I'm saying? No from like every facet, from like you know, like the music you made to then like, of course, you know, we just had T Grizzly on the show to like the music he makes. Like, it's just so beautiful that like all this is going on at like one time too. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, you got the use the Boldy James, the T Grizzly. Like, everybody's kind of doing their thing, and it's being like recognized and like appreciated more now. No, no doubt, and it's a beautiful thing just in general because I feel like a lot of people in the, in the city, like we've been in the industry. It's just a lot of That's people. That's the thing I'd be saying too. Like you yeah, look at like, pictures from like ten years ago of, of like Babyface Ray trying to you know make music. It's like this should have been you know it's been a thing. Yeah, and it's like so it's like to see everybody that's winning from the Babyface Rays, the VZs, the Skiller Babies, PZs. Yeah. Like those niggas was like champions to us, um, even as fans. Because I'm a rapper too, but like of course. those were guys that as far as the Team East sides and Blade Ice were like we grew up to them. The Street Lord Wands, like mm. they really paved the way for artists like ourselves to really paint pictures. And 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 it really tell the narrative of what's really going on. Like niggas be celebrities in our city before the world catch on. That's to what Skiller. Them. That's what exactly what Skiller told me too. Yeah, like, like Skiller. That's my brother. Yeah, like that's he was like he's like he's like yeah like I'm like I just walk around back home, but I'm like a celebrity back home before mm -hmm. anybody else even really knew me. No, for sure. And it, and it's like you can get millions of views just off Detroit alone before it pop. Like before right. we got the light that we got now. Like niggas was getting millions of views on YouTube just from the city or just the Midwest region alone, yeah, yeah, yeah. and really making money, really touring the Midwest, like really tearing Kentucky and mm. Milwaukee and Ohio and all of these states up just strictly off of music. But you know, but uh, I think it was Vezo who told me this. But what he told me, he's like, but we, uh, I forget, if it wasn't Vezo, it was somebody from Detroit. But they like, you know. We have a great music scene. He's like, but we hard on people. Like, you got to be hard to come out of Detroit. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. Like, you get your ass booed fast. Like, <laughs> if the city don't it was fuck with hard you. Enough. Somebody told me this shit, but yeah. Yeah, like, hell, yeah, bro. If the city don't fuck with you, like, if you don't got no love, no real background, mm -hmm. if don't nobody know you or can vouch for you, especially in the music space, 
Like niggas a hoe you, like for real, for real. <laughs> like our our city is hard critics for real. I love the city, but it's like we are we're our biggest critics at yeah. the end of the day. Like if you make it out of the city and you get love and niggas yeah. love you, especially if you get the the younger guys like the young niggas, it's over, bro. But that's like it's pressure over. makes diamonds, and like you know, and like you've been seeing like how all the incredible artists like yourself, the visas like that have made it out of Detroit, and people like. Are like the city genuinely fucks with, and people outside the city genuinely fuck with too, mm -hmm. because like that pressure made y'all who y'all are and shit. No doubt, and it's like the ones that have made it out, man. I feel like we all got that it factor. Like V's been a star, bro. Facts. You feel me? T been able to rap, bro. Babyface mm -hmm. been who he is ten years ago. It just took for the world to catch up, and for more than anything, for niggas to stay consistent and believe in what they're doing. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. But it, it, it still falls back to having real respect in the city too. Feel me like from a street perspective, like the t the climate and the times is different now. But once upon like once upon a time, like street cred like was really worth a lot in the street. Like it was mm -hmm. it was worth more than money or any of that shit was, especially in the music space because we come from raw rap. We come from reality. We come from really rapping about killing and drug dealing and hustling. Like that's what we known for mm -hmm. more than anything outside of like the Big Shines, the Royces, the Danny Browns, and everybody that's. From that era, right. but majority of our rap is street rap. Yeah, it's, it's reality rap. Yeah, and but then you know, it, but like you said, like it's it's cool to see the growth from that to like now, where it's like, you know, there's so many different lanes of of rap from Detroit, Facts. and like they're all being appreciated in their own different and like unique way too. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like people, people like these differently than pe than like the way that they like T Grizzly. You feel me? For sure. You know what I'm saying, or For people sure. like you differently than they like them too. Like it's all being respected but like it's also it's just cool it's just cool to see or people like you know you have people like you know you mentioned Roy's Big Sean like you know everybody kind of like coexisting in a space where um like the eyes is just kind of back on that on, oh, the, on that sure. scene which I think is dope and it's like we all got a got a high level at, at least my generation I could speak on like we all got a high level of respect for each other mm -hmm. you know yeah. what I mean like when when we see each other we support each other like we show love yeah. like um Baby Money, like he another yeah, one. Shout out Baby, yeah, yeah. 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 Shout, shout out to Baby Money, just everybody that's a part of my generation. My homeboy Geech, Geech yeah. is another one that's in my lane for lyrical rap. Like he's somebody that I look to to feed me mm. musically. You feel what I'm saying? But it's like we all respect each other at the end of the day. And a lot of the wars that was going on silently in the city, from west side to east side, like niggas started to see the bigger picture. Like if Atlanta is doing it, if LA is doing it, and New York is doing it, yeah. like all that petty shit and beefing that we was on as teenagers, like we had to put that shit to the side. Well, you see like T, like T and Sada being like, exactly. you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, like that. Yeah. And that's the east side and the west side. Me and T, like that's blood family. So like we from the same hood, but that's that's family family. Yeah, so it's yeah. like, it's always been a west side versus an east side thing. And a lot of those wars and beefs was like silent. Mm -hmm. So it was like to see a lot of niggas put their pride to the side and really had conversations and to watch a lot of our artists grow and become men and move in that space, like it's it's inevitable for everything that's yeah. that's due to come to us. Facts. It's inevitable. But it's beautiful, man. And I love it. No, no doubt. So um microdose on the way. Microdose most definitely is on the way. Um executive produced by Royce the Five Nine. Shout out to the big one. On. Um, what else we got cooking up for the rest of this year? And well, I mean, we only have like one well, recording. There's only like a month after the year. Yeah, but, yeah. But what, what do we have cooking for next year then? Um, a lot of music. Um, I'm I'm removing the inconsistency that I've that I've had in the music space. So for me personally, a lot of music, a lot Dope. of content, um, a lot of spiritual growth, a lot of healing, a lot of money. Um, yeah, that's really it for us. Word, man. Well, by the time the people see this, the freestyle's out now. My no dose on the way, so make sure y'all go check that out when it's out. Um, before we get up out of here, man, uh, it's been a pleasure. No doubt. Um, anything else you want to let the people know, where they can follow you at, all that good stuff. Now's the time to do it. This camera on the right, right here. Right here. All right. Official Courtney Bell cool. on everything. Oh, shit. He knocked down the sideboards. Sponsored by sideboards. Go get those. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. For sure. Um, official Courtney Bell on everything. Um, Micro dose on the way. Freestyle. I'm about to do some hot shit. Joy Road, Long Live My Brother Snoop. There you go. Well, make sure you go check out the project when it's out. Go check out the single out now. Go show them some love. Go show them some support. Love is free. Support is free. But child already knew that till next time on the radar. We out. Bow. My God.